Hello and welcome back to Educator.com and welcome back to Biochemistry. So today we're going to start our discussion of biochemistry proper with the first of the biological macromolecules, um, the proteins, and proteins are made of amino acids. So let's just jump right on in. Okay, so of the biological uh, macromolecules, uh, proteins are the most abundant. So you have lipids, which are your fats, you have the nucleic acids, uh, you have the carbohydrates, the sugars, and you have proteins. Proteins are the most abundant. Proteins are the ones that actually do everything. They're the workhorses of physiological systems. So let's go ahead and write that down. Let's, let's do a blue ink today. Okay. So of the biological macromolecules, molecules proteins are the most abundant and the most diverse. Okay. Proteins are made of amino acids strung together like, um, like pearls on a string, like beads on a string. So proteins are made up of amino acids strung together. That's it. That's all a protein is. It could be two or three amino acids strung together, or it could be a thousand amino acids strung together. Um, that's it. Okay, so there are 20 common amino acids Twenty common amino acids that make up the majority of proteins. That make up, well they make up all the proteins, but I'll go ahead and just write the majority because that's the way I have it written that make up the majority of proteins. Okay, all, all 20 are actually called alpha amino acids. And have the following structure. have the following structure. Okay, so we've got, uh, uh, let me see, where should I put this? That's ah, fine, I'll go ahead and put it in the center. So we have C, COO, O minus, okay, have an H, we have NH3 plus, did I put a plus? Yes, I did, and we have R. Okay, so this right here, this is called the alpha carbon. And it is the alpha carbon because it is the, well, okay. It is the C that's attached to the carbonyl group. That's attached to the carbonyl group. And the carbonyl group, you remember from organic chemistry, is this thing right here carbonyl. In this particular case, it's a carboxylic acid because you have C double bonded O, single bonded O minus. The H has been taken off. It's usually COOH. And we'll talk about why I wrote the minus and the plus here a little bit later. Um, but that's it. So it's called the alpha carbon. So the alpha carbon is not the first carbon in the chain. The first carbon is the carbon of the carbonyl, one, two. And if there are others, but the alpha carbon is the one that's actually attached to the carbonyl carbon. So it's very, very important to distinguish that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into larger molecules and things like that when we talk about alpha, beta, gamma, delta, things like that. Okay, so the only thing <clears throat> now, the only thing that is different from one amino acid to the next, the only thing that is different from one amino acid to the next is the R group. It's this thing right here. That's the only thing that's different. Everything else is actually still the same. 
So there is an alpha carbon, there's an H attached to it, there is an amino group, that's why we call it an alpha amino acid. This is the acidic group, the COOH or COO minus. It's a carboxylate. It's been it's lost its hydrogen ion. So carboxylic acid, carbon, alpha amino acid. This is the only thing that changes for the 20 different amino acids. Okay. So different R groups give different properties. Give different properties. And this is what makes proteins so amazing. The body um, coded in your DNA is, of course, uh, the instructions for how to make the protein. And the protein is just based on a series of amino acids strung together. This one, this one, this one, this one. Depending on how we string them together and how many, we get different properties for the different proteins because different proteins have to serve different functions. This is what's so amazing. You have this incredible, incredible diversity of things that proteins do. I mean, all kinds of things, things that you would never think are connected. And yet all of that is based on the properties of these 20 amino acids. 20, that's it. I mean, it's just as extraordinary as having those four bases that make up the DNA. I mean, it really is kind of extraordinary that you can actually have this level of uh, diversity of function uh, just from some, you know, from so many, from so few pieces. Okay. Now, let's go ahead. Uh, let me redraw the structure here, it's just so we have it on the same page. Uh, C. O minus, there is an H, there is an R group, and there is an amino group, and I'll put three, and I'll put a positive charge on the nitrogen. Okay, so no